So before even we go with this walkthrough, let's first see what a research portfolio is, right? So a research portfolio is going to be an organized record. Organized record of what? Organized record of academic as well as your research experiences. It's going to be uh, your achievements. What achievements have you got till now? And third, about your professional development. So these three are what is going to go into your research portfolio in a very systemic way. Next. So this research this research portfolio it's going to be an ongoing process now why is it an ongoing process because obviously uh, you you will keep uh, you know developing in your professional work right so obviously there's going to be additional uh, information that you have to put in your research portfolio so yes it's going to be an ongoing process and you it's going to be very dynamic and it's going to keep changing. So as in when you get an achievement or you do a new research or say you grow in your professional work, you're going to keep in adding that in your research portfolio. Next. So how is it going to be uh, unique, right? So it's it's nothing but it's something like an addition to your CV. So your CV is going to be uh, again a systemic, uh, you know, jot down of all the, uh, you know, education as well as the experience that you have. So this particular research portfolio, it's going to be an additional to CV. It's mostly going to focus on your research work and you as a person as well. And it's going to be an interesting way of putting out your work out there. So who are going to see this particular research po portfolio? it's for any public for that matter who are interested in your research this public it could even be collaborators who are interested in collaborating with your project or it could even be potential employers who are looking at your profile uh, for for taking uh, taking you as their employ employee so any of these people for any of these people who are interested to see your research work or your professional experiences for them this research portfolio is going to be a unique representation of you as a person. Now, let's start our walkthrough. So this is how your you know, first page can look like. Say for example, we're going to build a, a website. That's your research portfolio website. Then this is how your first page or your landing page can look like. That is, you have the heading called research portfolio and here you put your name and your designation. So this is a very simple way of uh, exhibiting your first or your landing landing page. Now, next is you can have a particular page called your major research focus now and you can write what are the uh, areas that is the research areas that you have done your work on or what you're presently doing, right? So those can be put up as bullet points. Now, why is this particular page important to be put at the starting of your portfolio itself? So it is something like say, you know, abstract of your paper, right? So why is an abstract important? Because it gives a summary of your uh, whole paper, your whole research, right? So this is uh, what uh, even here it's going to do. So it's going to help the viewers or the readers to know what your research work is going to be on so that uh, they can or uh, if they are interested, they'll go further into your research portfolio. Otherwise, they can just skip it. It's going to save their time, right? So this is something like an abstract for your whole research portfolio. Now, the next page that can be is about your inspiration, right? What inspiration? It could be maybe a story or your own personal experience also, or it could be a story of, you know, a person, your inspirational person or your role model, right? Why is this important? Because it tells the readers about what you are as a person, right? It's, it's more of giving a first impression of yourself for your readers. So that is why this comes second in our... Um, research portfolio. So that is the importance of this particular page. It's not mandatory to have this page, but you can have it if you want. It's an optional. Next, uh, so it's going to be uh, your contents, right? So what is going to come after this particular page? So that is what you'll be putting in this uh, content page. So here first, we're going to start with about me and then your educational background, then your experiences, that is your professional as well as your research experience. Then you can have skills, your projects, your key projects and your notable publications, as well as your social media handles. So these are just, uh, you know, a gist of what can go in. So it's, it's just a model. You can also play around this. You can also have something like the awards and the honors that you had or a few conferences that you attended 
did, few talks that you had given. So, you know, you can include anything uh, in this content as well. Next, so uh, we are going to start with About Me, right? So this is going to be your first technical page. So in About Me, you're basically going to write a little bit of about yourself in uh, say three or four lines only and you can if necessary include your picture here so this is going to be your about me page followed by of course your educational background so this educational background uh, can be in chronological order uh, starting with your first degree right so you mention your year and then what kind of degree did you get and also you can um, you know write a small description or uh, information about what did you learn uh, from this particular degree or what were the activities or the key research uh, that you did during your bachelor's or your master's or even your PhD. So this information can also go into this particular section and you can also include just a small logo of uh, your university so that it's easier for people to grasp about which university it is. So this way you can write about your bachelor's, about your master's as well as your doctorate of philosophy. Now, after your educational background, it's of course the professional experience that you have. It's both your work as well as your research experience can come into this. So you can uh, think of innovative ways to include your experience in this. You can either put it in bullet point or you can have a table in which you will, you can talk about the experience, what is the designation that you had and what particular work did you, did you do in that, you know, uh, professional experience. So this could be one of the way that you put the information out there. Now, after experience, you can have the notable projects that you have done throughout your career, career, right? So here you can talk about few of the projects, like three projects or more, and you can write what did you do in this project? What are the key takeaways from this project? Who are the people that you worked with? And what was more interesting or the key findings compared to other projects? So these can be the information that you can put uh, right here. So for different projects, you can uh, similarly make such sections, right? And after your notable projects, obviously you can tell about your publications, right? Like for example, uh, the key publications that you have done throughout your ca career, it could be, uh, you know, uh, papers from higher impact journal where you are say the first author or even a collaborative work for that matter. So here you can put the image of your publication and you can also mention the impact factor or the journal in which it was being published. So these are the different ways that you can uh, put through this particular information about your publications. Next is about the skill sets that you have or that you have acquired right uh, throughout your career. So one uh, is that you can mention all of these skills as well as the description of the skills. Say for example, it's a new tool or a technique that you know, do mention what that technique is and give a small description about maybe what is the key thing that you know about this technique or in which area of research did you uh, particularly learn this technique. So such things can be listed down in the skills section. Now after skills you can also talk about the conferences that you've attended where you uh, went ahead and you presented your paper or you presented a poster and maybe you got um, you know uh, uh, you secured places first second or third place in all of these papers so such things can be mentioned so these are nothing but your achievements so your achievements can be mentioned in bullet points a second, you can also talk about uh, if you have invited, if you were invited to expert talks, if you've given talks in, uh, say, universities or industries. So that also can be listed down in this particular page. After this, you can also talk about your interested research area. So this is uh, towards the end of your uh, particular portfolio because this um, research, this this page is going to talk about what your future research area is going to look like. So we already talked about the research area that you've focused on or you're presently focusing on in our second page of the research portfolio itself. Now this is going to be what will be your future work, what will it look like, right? So this is majorly for all those people who are interested to collaborate with you, right? Uh, for example, they are somebody who are working maybe on the same field or maybe they want to collaborate with you and then see 
see what you know explore new areas as well so this uh, can potentially be helpful for those people so you give your research areas one two and three different research areas that you are willing to explore and expand in your research portfolio so these can be mentioned here as well the last page that you can have is the social media and the contact. Now, why is this important? Say, for example, somebody has come through your, uh, come across your portfolio. They have seen all of your portfolio. They're really interested to contact you, to maybe work with you, or to even collaborate with you. So, such for such people, you definitely have to give your contact information. It could be a Twitter handle, or your LinkedIn handle, or your phone number, or even your email ID. So, all of these are important to be given in your research portfolio so that people who are interested can reach out to you and this could be a very good engagement between you and the scientific community. Now, with this, we come to the end of this particular section, right? So this uh, is going to, this is how a, a website can look like. So you can even play around all of these, right? So say, for example, you can have a drop down menu or you can, you know, uh, go to a different page when you click on one of the sections. So such things can also be done using a website. So this is a very interesting way of putting out yourself, putting out your work to the public. So I'm sure that it was super helpful for all of you out there do let us know in the comment section if you want any more videos such videos and see you all until next video bye